Okay, so sensors and sensor fusion are one of the trends that are driving us down the road to autonomous vehicles. But it's just as important to talk about how those vehicles are being powered. Car companies are providing more hybrid electric or fully electric options to meet customers' demand for more fuel efficient vehicles, as well as government regulations for lower and lower emissions. As an example, the Chinese government is deploying 100,000 charging stations to meet their goal of 5 million electric vehicles on the road by the year 2020. And the German government's going a step further by mandating that 100% of vehicles are zero emissions by the year 2030. That's only 13 years away. And this introduces a major challenge because the control systems for electric vehicles are more complicated than those for traditional vehicles. Now, just a few years ago, we had Subaru on stage, and they talked about how moving from the road to the lab reduced their test time by 95%, and it increased their test coverage. Now, we want to bring that type of impact to more and more vehicle providers. So we've been working with our HIL specialty partner, Opal RT. To learn more about it, I want to bring out two people who live their lives a quarter mile at a time, Yannick Martin and Nadine Herreri. Yannick, hey, how are you? great. Welcome to NI Week. Thank you, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about Opal RT and the work you do? Sure. Opal RT design digital simulator and hardware in the loop test system for electrical, electromechanical, and power electronic test systems. So the mission of our team is really to design cutting edge, real-time simulation technology for engineers and researchers around the world. Now you guys are the real experts in this power electronic space. Can you explain what makes these systems more complicated than traditional systems? Yeah, sure. The main difference between typical test system and the one designed for power electronic is that the simulation rate needs to be much more faster. And this is where Apollo RT comes in. Due to the speed of the input and output of the control system, the simulation needs to run in the order of one megahertz, which is about 500 times faster than typical simulation rate. Wow, so one megahertz control loop rates, you're not gonna reliably get that from a processor-based system, so that's where running these models on FPGAs come in, and you've been working hard to make that easier for customers to do. Yeah, I've already spent many years developing an electrical solver on FPGA called the EHS. Take models from industry standard modeling environment and deploys them directly to FPGA with no compilation time. Nadine, could you show us? Absolutely. So here's a typical power conversion system in multi-SIM. I can export the circuit directly from multi-SIM. And then I can dynamically load this new model onto the EHS solver core that is already loaded and running on the FPJ target. Immediately, my simulation is running at 4.7 megahertz in a flex rio, and all of that was done without having to wait for an FPJ to compile. That means that you can test and iterate on your designs much faster. So we've been, yeah. Yeah, we can clap for that. <laughs> All right. So we've been hard at work, and we are very pleased to announce that the EHS solver is now available on all Zinc and Kintec 7 FPGA platform from National Instrument. That's phenomenal. So all of our current FPGA targets can now use this technology. Now, that's not the only challenge with testing these power electronic systems. You also want to test the power levels of these systems, and they can be quite high. Yeah, well, customer wants to test the inverters as a single unit, syncing and then sourcing a lot of power. And, you know, combining this to HIL simulation makes the, the realism of, and the physical test, close to the physical testing and the test coverage and repeatability of HIL simulation. So, you know, I'm very pleased to announce that we're going to add this capability to the NI platform this year by releasing a new SLSC board that will simulate inductive loads in the one to five kilowatt range to make those type of testing a lot easier. Wow, up to five kilowatts of power for these systems. So that's two major announcements to address the two major challenges of Power Electronics HIL test. Yeah. I knew we were working with the right company. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Yannick. See Thank you. you. Thank you, Nadine. Have a great day, Jamie. As electric vehicles become more common, there's another component that we need to test to ensure safety and reliability, and that's the battery pack. Our engineering team at NI has been working very closely with lead users to understand their challenges and have developed some new capabilities to help them meet those challenges of providing safe and reliable battery packs at lower cost 
and lower test footprint. So to learn more, I'd like to welcome to the stage Shruti Shrihati and Mark Hendricks. Boom. Shruti, can you talk about the challenges our customers are facing around battery packs? Sure, Jamie. Since automobiles are prevalent in people's daily lives, there are many challenges to introducing a new source of energy. For something that we rely on for our daily commute, reliability and longevity of the battery are key. Reliability of the battery packs requires special attention to cooling, efficiency of the subsystems that are drawing power, and charging, just to name a few. Yeah, and there's one other challenge. These battery packs are made up of small cells, about four volts, and when you put them together in series, the voltages get pretty high, hundreds of volts. Exactly, and this architecture introduces the possibility of a high common mode voltage when you might be measuring a cell in the 10th module. Now, traditionally, these types of measurements have been solved using a DMM and a switch. But as these systems become more dynamic and additional sensor measurements are introduced, the level of synchronization that is required to characterize these systems also increases. Yeah, Mark, you're standing right in front of a PXI test system. That's right. I've got a PXI test system, a 600-volt power supply, and a battery simulator from our alliance partner, Bloomy Controls. Now, we're going to emulate a battery under test with the power supply and the battery simulator and measure the cell voltages with the test system. All right. Let's, let's see a demo. All right. So I've got everything running. We're measuring about 4 volts per cell in the battery module. Now, we're measuring in the second module, so there's only about 24 volts of common mode voltage. But if we want to measure the cells in the 15th module, we're now measuring 4 volts per cell on top of over 300 volts of common mode. That's why isolation is crucial for these measurements. Yes, yeah, so you're still measuring 4 volts, but it's between 336 volts and 340 volts, so pretty high voltage. And you guys didn't pull together existing products to do this to get the dynamic and the high voltage. You guys have developed something new. That's right, Jamie. I'm very pleased to introduce one of our newest data acquisition modules, the PXIE4310. This is an eight channel, 600 volt, channel to channel isolated module. And for dynamic battery testing, it will reduce the price per channel and the test system footprint. And those are the challenges the customers have been facing. Great work. Thanks, Jamie. Really well done. Thanks a lot.